Hi everyone, I hope you all are doing good and having a wonderful day. In this video, we'll be talking about another vulnerability which is often ignored by a lot of people. Not only that, but this vulnerability has been recently identified in one of the most famous LLM based application out there, which is ChatGPT. And also, this particular vulnerability was rewarded a four digit bounty. So we'll be going deep into how we can find this vulnerability and how we can you know fix this vulnerability as well but as always before going into this video if you haven't watched or checked my previous video then go ahead and check it out the link of the video is given in the description as well as you can see it at the right side of the screen and now without further ado let us get started Now, before going deep into this video, let us first talk about the vulnerability which we are going to learn today. So the vulnerability name here is known as Web Cache Deception. It is a vulnerability that allow attackers to trick the cache server into believing that, you know, we are storing a static file, but instead of that, we are actually storing something very sensitive. Now, to understand in depth about the cache server and what exactly we are doing here, let's try to go ahead and see some diagrams. So over here, I have a small diagram that I have created. Let me just open it for you. So you can see this is normally how an application behaves. Let me just zoom in a bit. Okay. So let's take a look at this particular picture right over here. So it says that in step one uh, is a client and there is a server the client is trying to access the home page or the main page of the application. So what they're going to do is first they're going to send a request like through a browser that, Hey, give me a, give me the main page, something like that. Then the server is going to respond with the response code, let's say 200. Okay. And then it will give us the HTML code. Once the HTML code has been sent or, you know, retrieved by us, the client through the browser, then the client is going to send another request for all the static files that are used you know static files like you know the javascript files uh, the images uh, the css file which are like you know designing the whole the whole web page like that and then the server is going to send the static files as well for example in this example let's say style.css script.js and some images file right now the thing is that you know let's say we have uh you know uh, on a on an application which is used by let's say you know thousands of people so what is going to happen in that case is for every user who is going to send a request to the to the server the server needs to send three things right the the web page uh, the static files like images css and the javascript file right now these files can be a lot bigger in size compared to the web application sorry compared to the web page itself right so what can happen is that if the single server is loading the static files as well as the html codes it can lead to you know lot of st stress onto the server which can ultimately you know uh, reduce the user experience of the particular application as well as you know once uh, let's say we have thousands of users or millions of users on an application it may cause you know uh, unintentional denial of service to the application because there are so many things that going on uh, on a single server right so to actually fix this we have something known as a cache server so basically in simple terms it is a separate server where we store all the static files the css js and images and all the static files that are not sensitive in nature is going to be stored on these particular uh sorry in on, on this server so let's take another example of how it's going to look if we have the cache server okay so again we have the same client in the same server here and in step number one again uh, we are trying to request for the home page and in the second step obviously we'll be getting the html codes right but again when like in the first example you see when we're trying to get the static files it's going to be the request is going to be sent to the server itself right but over here the client will send the request to you know fetch the static files to the cache server and then at the step number four the cache server instead of the actual server is going to share or send all the you know static files like again the style.css the images file and script.js and all the other files right so in this particular setup what's going to happen is all the static files or the files which are you know like reoccurring a lot of time and the files which are not sensitive but 
must be needed in you know in every scenario of the web page like you know images uh, css and js file so all these files are going to be saved on a separate server which is a cache server which is what you call a cache server okay in this scenario itself when we have a setup like this the main server will have less stress it will be having you know better loading time improved user experience and obviously less load onto the main server and since because of this the application will be more optimized and by nature by the nature of cache server itself they are comparatively very fast you know so we'll be getting the static files very fast and at then it will help the client to fetch the uh, website or web page comparatively faster than the previous setup okay so this is what the cache server is doing now the question is what can actually go wrong in this scenario so to answer that question we need to think that what can happen if instead of storing static file we can somehow trick the application into storing something really sensitive if we are able to do that then we'll have something known as as i've told you before web cache deception so this is what we actually do in web cache deception vulnerabilities or you know misconfiguration so i hope you all have understood this so far now let us go ahead and quickly see the practical demonstration of it so that we all can understand in a better way how we can do web cache deception so now let us go ahead and practically see that how we can do web cache deception attack okay so first i have this uh, you know lab created over here so we are just simply going to copy this and open it into our browser okay let's click on paste and go and as you can see clearly over here we have a login application let me just configure my burp suit as well and in this particular example i'm going to take two accounts first account will belong to obviously an attacker and the second one is for you know the victim okay and then we are going to actually see how the attack actually works so first i'm going to log in as an attacker so i have my account fayas at the rate bpractical.tech and let me just type the password so the password i've set is batman let me just intercept this so you can see we have this over here let me forward this now and you can see we are redirected to profile right and it says that this is your profile page and sensitive information goes here and you can clearly see that my credential is actually being displayed over here so what i'm going to do is to identify whether there is any kind of you know uh, web cache reception or not or in general we have any caching mechanism here or not to simply intercept this request from this profile and let us just send this to repeater now and then in repeat i'm going to send the request again okay and if you take a closer look we have this header over here cache control no store no cache and must revalidate now what does this mean this simply means that you know this endpoint should not be cached by any means because as you can clearly say this this endpoint is actually you know handling or holding something very sensitive right so by default we have something like this now what we actually need to do is in order to find web cache deception is we need we can try various things but the most simple thing is to append a parameter and trick the application into you know storing something or you know trick the application into believing that we are actually trying to get a css file or maybe any kind of static files like js png or something like that like let's say random parameter okay and just add this value random parameter equal to ls uh, test dot css okay and now if the application is actually vulnerable it will think that we are actually trying to fetch a css file so it is automatically going to save this page into its cache server so when we're going to click on send you can see we've got cache control uh, no store no cache must reevaluate but if we send this request again you see what exactly happened here is that the header was removed from this you know uh, this response this clearly means that this application has successfully cached our you know request or sorry response right so to validate that we can simply copy this url now and let's open this in a random browser and you see without logging in into this browser we still have our application sorry our uh, our response saved here right so now how we can exploit this 
we can simply you know create something like you know uh let's say be practical equal to test.css now we have obviously identified the vulnerability so what i'm going to do is i'm simply going to copy this url and let's assume that now from the victim's perspective i am simply logging into my application so let me just log in okay yeah, let me just turn off the intercept let me just go login let me click on register sorry let's click on login and i'm going to log in as victim at the red gmail.com and the password is victim for this one so you can see we have victim at the gmail.com and the credential is victim so what the attacker is going to do now is attacker can create a link something like this and they can simply send this link to the victim okay and since the link is controlled by the attacker they obviously know what uh, where we can actually access the sensitive information so this time when the victim is going to you know visit this link in their browser let's say once they hit enter for them nothing suspicious is going to happen right because for them they are like simply seeing the you know their profile page but once the request is cached the hacker or the attacker can simply open this link in a new tab and once they do that you see what happens their sensitive information got cached into our into the cache server and we're successfully able to fetch it right so this is the actual impact of web cache deception vulnerability i hope you all have understood this so now i think the video is a bit long than i expected so we'll be covering the mitigation part as well as the interesting case of chat gpt in the upcoming video but for this video i hope you all have understood what is web cache deception and how it works and i hope you all have understood that how we can look for web cache deception vulnerability if you have any doubts if you have any issues feel free to let me know your doubts or issues in the comment section also do join our telegram channel if you want to stay updated with the latest trends and technologies going under cyber security ethical hacking and bug bounty and now with that being said keep learning keep hacking and thank you so much for watching this video